Come in, come in, welcome. What's that? No, no, you haven't missed anything. They're just about to start. Buffalo sports, of course. Everything. Bills, sabers, buttes, bad... No, it's not very... Well, they certainly think they're funny. Listen, let me pour you a drink. Have a seat and lend an ear. You'll hear tales of sorrow and despair, endless droughts and infamous tanks, and things Mike doesn't like. Please, join us. I think the true mark of the fact that the Buffalo Sabres are watchable a game uh, came on Saturday when they went down 3-1. to one. Like last season when the Sabres went down 3-1, to one, there's only four minutes left in that game when they're still struggling to come back. They're not getting shots on goal. Everyone in Buffalo would have tuned out of that game. And I think I speak for a lot of us when I had this feeling in the back of my head, like, I don't know, they're not, they, they, they've been looking good. I think they can do it. This team doesn't have any quit. And sure enough, the Sabres proved this week, not just on Saturday, but all throughout the week, that this team really doesn't have any quit. They've come from behind. They've shown more spirit. I think we've seen from this team in five years. And folks, I'm just going to say it. Buffalo hockey is officially fun again. It's very fun. It's a super resilient team. Like years past, they go down a goal and, it's it. You see the you know, heads, go, checks out and... heads go down to the bench, and now they they don't seem like they're behind far enough. They, every every comeback is any any deficit is they, they're able to come back from. It seems like anyone who wants to go right at Jack Eichel as a bad leader because he doesn't play defense should look at that team's mentality with him wearing the C <laughs> and realize that it goes way beyond the fact that sometimes he doesn't back check very well. Uh, well, and boy, that is the immediate go to is well, you see him not back check in that one shift in the second period. Like, all right, man, cool. Uh, he is exactly what you wanted to be as far as a, a, a captaincy through 17 games so far. And I'm going to say that Jeff Skinner is uh, the most important acquisition that this team has had. Non-draft category in God knows I, it, I'm racking my brain to come up with somebody maybe of this entire decade, I would say he's yeah, been a, that important into unlocking this team. I was going to say uh, was Dominic Kashuk was what? 1990. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> five, yeah, four or five, yeah. long time ago. Uh, but I mean, just the the impact, and it's, it it sounds hyperbolic, but it just seems like his ability to slide into this team just makes everything better because he is the guy that we've been waiting for. He's been the wing that they've been missing on this team for a decade plus now. I was reading an article before season started, and it was titled "The, the Eichel Effect." And how whenever Rainer goes to the line, their shooting percent, their shooting percentage automatically goes up. It mm. seems like, and right now Skinner is scoring at a twenty-one percent pace, which is probably going to regress well, at oh, yeah, some but point. But, but it's still crazy. Yeah, it is. I mean, but you look at the other guys who have had significant playing time with Jack. So Skinner's at twenty-one-one. Pominville seventeen point eight. Connor Sheary seventeen point eight. And you assume that all those numbers are going to go down. Skinner is a noted streaky scorer, but all those guys get to play with Jack, and man, all of a sudden the puck finds the back of the net, and we saw it for two periods with Sam on Saturday, too. He goes in late in that game, has a big pass for the Skinner goal, gets the goal to tie the game in the end of the third period. Just everyone is with those two right now. Yeah, and it's just it, catching fire. And it's so funny when you talk about a guy like Jason Pominville, who I just assumed was washed up, and it, I still think is not long for the hockey world, but is having quite the renaissance. And then Reinhardt, a guy who has been – much maligned since being drafted here four years ago now. Uh, both guys have, have kind of been unlocked here, and it's it's really cool to see. And it's fun hockey again. It's, re you, know, it, you know, it's not the 80s, but it's relatively high scoring for the time. And what a fun game it was on Saturday between two teams that are young and kind of expectations really weren't entirely sure. The Canucks, a lot of people thought, would still be at the bottom of the Pacific. They've risen. I believe that they're still sitting in second place as we record this on Monday night. And they've done a great job. And same thing can be said with the Sabres. They're kind of mirror images. You think of the disastrous trade with Cody Hudson that they made with that team so many years ago. And now to see where both teams are, it's kind of it's kind of refreshing. And both of them led by noted rookies and yeah. Darlene and Jasper Patterson. Yep. And the youth movement taking over. And on the heels of that, they played a hell of a game on Thursday night, too. We were watching it at our 
bowling league quote against unquote, the uh, the Bruins against are? the Les Habitants. Oh, that's oh, that's right. Yes, yeah, sorry, Sabers. I forgot that we weren't a Canucks podcast. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can we can throw that in at the end if you want. No, nah, that's all right. We'll f- do that for a course. You forgot, sorry. eh? By yeah. week, by week show, Canucks podcast. Yeah, um, that's our whatever the zip code of Vancouver, <laughs> like the four K seventeen. Yeah, four. It's, it's, it's six podcasts. digits, whatever it is, and three of them are letters. It's a it's a weird time. Yeah, we had uh, to cut out sport on the Twitter handle. But don't worry <laughs> too about many, it. Too many letters why in the zip code. Why didn't we just use their area code like we use here? Because it's Canada. It's still yeah, three-digit like, area. Yeah, code. but you have to do a plus, and it's it's no, you don't. You do. don't want to deal with it. <laughs> Canadian, at, calling like, Canada is like calling the U.S. Look dude. at the Canadian phone expert over here. He is logged on. I He's have, willing to battle. I like it. <laughs> I've I've got reason to call Canada. <laughs> we all do. I got family and friends up there. I got a girlfriend up there. I think that I keep telling people about. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's talk about Montreal six five. What it's terrible display of goaltending by both teams to start. Gary Price. That was a, oh no! That was rough by Carey Price. It was rough by Olmark. What, it was first year of an eight year deal. <laughs> he's, Any goaltender who allows like, two goals in the first like period sub nine fifteen right now oh, should just reconsider their life choices. Sabaka is uh, Scandinavian for sniper, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Noted goal scorer, Vladimir Savatka. Mm-hmm. But again, they fought. That game was back and forth. They had to dig themselves out of a couple holes. They did. They wrote it out to overtime and a, a kind of fitting ending to that game because the last time we were here with you was immediately after the overtime loss to the Calgary Flames. We watched the end of the game and immediately began recording this show. And again, it was the same three on the ice Thursday night. You got Bristol line in, carrying the puck up the ice. And this time, instead of missing, it's Montreal who misses a shot, allows Rissa to go back up and just wire one back, go on to the half boards and jack off a stick a little bit in celebration and the much different feel to that game and nothing wrong with bit, that hopefully a little bit of a confidence booster there for for rasmus who i think is the the new target of the target of the year for saber fans to decide a player is or isn't good have you seen his heat charts when he's on the ice mm-hmm. and how the scoring is seemingly coming from only one side yet everybody still thinks that it's his fault yeah it's coming from all these the side that bristol Island is not patrolling interesting how that works isn't it you yeah all pick- those you got to pick the biggest name when you're going after somebody. I mean, people are saying Eichel's not scoring enough, but if, if you look, it's okay four goals. But yeah. what was it? Fifteen assists. Yeah, Fifteen assists. That means tied he's tied for the team lead in points. So yeah, that <laughs> means he's doing his part and getting the team scoring. It sounds like it's Ristolainen's doing his part on defense. It's whoever he's paired with is the weak link in that yeah, pair. Scandella, not a great look. Yeah, those heat charts always show that they're even entering the zone on the opposite side of Ristolainen. Yep. They're tr- they're doing everything they can to avoid being on that side, and typically much better results occur when you avoid going up against Rasmus. So is he going to have a bad plus minus? Yeah, probably. It's pretty bad right but, now. But he's and, not even that, so much. Too. But <laughs> yeah, he enjoys all the tough matches. You know, and it's it's that is I mean that's the RBIs of hockey, right? It's such a malign stat. You know, p- people still will cite it in defense of whatever they're trying to prove. But I think we all are aware of the fact that. Rasmus Ristolainen is a very good defenseman. He's doing his part. It's not his fault that hit whatever reason his partner doesn't seem to be able to pick up the slack for him. So, uh, but you're right. They are going to go after. The, you know, it. It's been we've seen it. It's been Eichel. It's been Reinhardt. It was the goaltending last year. Um, maybe rightfully so with Leonard, and now it looks like Ristolainen's the guy that everybody's going to be bitching about for one reason or another. So same as practice today and. They put the lines up on Twitter.com, you know, and they, they took Pominville off of the line with Skinner and Eichel, which I find kind of frustrating. That line is going as one of the best lines in hockey, and it's frustrating to me because I just feel like the only reason they're making the move is because right now Reinhardt is so ineffective away from Jack, and they're just trying to get him going, but then you're going to lose a production for another player at the same time. I think part of it is because of how that game ended on Saturday, though, with Reinhardt going out with those guys and getting that well, goal on the assist yeah. late. Understood, but... It, put, it, it does suck for Pominville. Maybe they feel that Pominville's production because of his age is not going to be consistent at that level. And I think at this point, the magic is from Jack Eichel and Jeff Skinner playing together. Those two have shown that Jack is just happy to have a guy who can finally play at his speed, a fast skater who can put those pucks in the back of the net when he puts it on a platter. Jack's got 15 assists now already this season, which 
And his production, his playmaking has always been there, but how long has it been? He's been, been about whole... a one to one player, it seems like, yeah. and now he's you know three to one. Well, he's always had to be. Yeah, yeah it, it's been his whole career that he hasn't had a guy who can finish at the level that Jeff Skinner has shown that he's able yeah. to finish while they're on the ice together. Mm-hmm. And I think with Sam, Sam and Jack play well together. They might think that's their top line of the future because any point, any any player you put out there with those two guys, I think at this point is going to produce at a greater rate, and. That's fine. At least for a game, I think we're going to see whether Sam's third period against Vancouver is sustainable, if he's going to be able to be that kind of third cog in the wheel, or if it's really just Pominville is that that's the fit there. It's kind of you just you just wish that Reinhardt could be effective away from Jack. He doesn't seem to do anything else unless he's with Jack Eichel, and it's like you want a player like that. That's such a so important in your organization to be able to play away from the other star players. You want him down like with Middle and Oposo, so you have two effective lines, not just one effective line. Which is I'm saying you're. Is what I'm frustrated with. Like they're just moving him just to make him more effective because he can't do shit without Jack. Seems like I don't know. There's there's frustration there. I'm thinking you put Pominville with Ristolainen, and then you can have all five of them out on the ice at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think you really lock down the other side of the ice there as well. And then the Ristolainen defensive heat chart uh, is just one black side of the ice, <laughs> and the other side lit up on fire. <laughs> oh, these are the days where I miss Mike Greer. <laughs> you need that defensive forward back out there, huh? You see that move Pedersen tried in uh, overtime? It's absolutely disgusting. If he would have scored that, if Skinner did not trip him, he was going to he was going to score if he didn't. <laughs> that would have been he beat everybody of the next decade. Yeah, like filthy. It, that was more just like, please don't get embarrassed. Please don't get embarrassed. That's okay. like a mini Ooh, dance. God. He he had to trip him because he 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 definitely had Hutton beat going across to that oh, yeah. side. Pedersen already over. got the best mitts in the league. Probably. Uh, I he mean, is that's his, if that's ridiculous. his, you know. Candidacy video, I'd say it was pretty effective because it was Datsuk for what a decade. Yeah, I mean Datsuk just was incredible with his ability, but it's amazing how Pedersen fell as far as he did in the draft. And I know he didn't fall that far. What, but the fact what that he was, was that, that about? Far, what was it about Pedersen? Yeah, they I don't just know if I know. they just European. Like Darlene said, that anyone who's watched him play knows how good he is, and maybe just enough people didn't go and watch. Because I him felt play. like I thought he was thought to be the best forward, and then he wasn't taken as such. No, but like Kachuk was taken second, right? I mean, he he was on fire with Ottawa there. Yeah, it's hard to knock that pick at this point, right? So, and you know, he got hurt, but then he came back a week early, and he's kind of right back to where he was. So, there, it's the rookie class has been really impressive actually this year at the top. It seems like it's been more dominant than it has been, in, you know, since the McDavid year. Um, but yeah, Patterson's he's he's absolutely legit. Um, if you're looking, you know forward here a little bit i've seen a lot of people say that this uh this week with the home game against tampa on tuesday and then pretty tricky back-to-back with uh winnipeg and minnesota the upper midwest uh back-to-back that they're dealing with on friday and saturday that if you can get this tampa game at home get two points out of that and then you know get two or four or whatever you're looking for on those back-to-back roadies with a p- trip to Pittsburgh looming is finishing up a three and four night on next Monday. Mm-hmm. You know, that could really go a long way into legitimizing this team in the minds of a lot of people. I think you definitely have a chance to turn some heads here this week. And you look past that, you've got Philadelphia coming in. Who knows what they are after that? You've got a Montreal team that you just beat a Detroit team that seems to be in the tank. So this next eight days here is really a, what can you do? Yeah. It's a chance for you to show that you are more than the 10th best team in your conference if you want to make that claim that, at least early on in the season, that you are going to be striving for that. It'll be interesting to see. I So they got four games here in the next seven days following today. What do you think is a good level for them to strive for points-wise? You want to try to split that ideally, but... There's not by any means an easy game on that stretch. You got a Vancouver, a Winnipeg team that is fantastic, Tampa Bay team that's consistently good, Pittsburgh who maybe not playing their best hockey this year, but you can never by any means count them as an easy no, game. It doesn't feel like. I mean, the Sabers haven't played well against Pittsburgh, and I know that they are a little bit further down there right now. I think they're fifth in the Metro, but um, that doesn't really mean anything to me. I think still it's you know Pittsburgh's Pittsburgh until they're knocked out and and show that they're not there and then you know minnesota and winnipeg they play in the best division in hockey and they're second minnesota's second winnipeg's third right now um just trailing nashville who you know those are 
three of the heavyweights right now. I mean, they've essentially knocked teams like Chicago and St. Louis out of that division in terms of the elite teams. So, yeah, I'm, the, there are no gimmies as far as I'm concerned in these next uh, next four, and especially with three of them coming on the road. I think, you know, we find out a lot. If this team does only get, you know, one out of eight points, I don't think that that buries them. I just think it's a tough stretch. But um, minimum three, you'd like if they can get four, then I'm satisfied with that. I think I don't know what we we even consider realistic when you haven't seen. You assume that uh, you may see one or two backup goalies as far as the Winnipeg and Minnesota games go. Um, so you don't know what the goaltending matchups are and all that. But on the surface, right now, I would say four of eight is uh, is ideal. So we'll see what comes of it. And the the tough part of that too is doing the the vast majority of that. Uh, and doing it on the road. They yeah. have Tampa at home tomorrow, but the next three games after that are then on the road. And that's a that is a tough Western Conference back to back there Friday and Saturday. Figure you get Olmark in at least one of those games. He had a little bit of a struggle in his last outing. Did not finish the Montreal game. Hutton got to come in and finish and get the win. And uh, Hutton got to stay in. And I was informed at some point about quarter to four on Saturday that the Buffalo goaltender is, in fact, allowed to stop the puck in a shootout. <laughs> and that yep. does make it a lot easier to take both the points in a shoot in a shootout when your goaltender makes a save. They're also allowed to score, too. How, go, how nice is that middle stack goal? <laughs> the so middle nice. stack goal. How about Jack just finally scoring? I think he's now two of 11 all time or two of 10 all time. A very poor shooting percent. And he said, I'm just did nothing he just skated in wristed it yeah, just scored not overthinking it might be that's what he said he said i didn't even want a great to do it. natural shot yeah middle stats was the Jeez. speed at which those dekes were happening was just unbelievable nothing marks pressed rj who saw thousands of hockey games yeah oh brother <laughs> <laughs> look out i also love that they rolled with the young guns yes in that just so go ahead just it's let fine the, let the kids that have grown up now a little bit more into the shootout era playing in college in their junior games they had shootouts and it goes to show like casey hasn't played more than a handful of nhl games and he's ready to go out there and we gotta play the kids hands they got moves middle oh, got some of the best hands so in the league nice. like, he's probably right on line with petterson the guy's filthy if i had drafted him so he put him out there for shootouts and those are two guys petterson was taking three picks ahead of Casey Middlestad. So those are two guys coming up in that same draft class, and I, that won't be a matchup we'll see very often, only twice a year, but that's kind of an interesting parallel to see in how that game played out. You have Patterson almost ends the game with that good goal and ends up coming down to Casey's stick instead and making that beautiful move to put it home. These young guys just keep coming in the league more and more. It it's There's so many young, fun players right now. Just mm -hmm. almost every team now seems to have them. I too. think this is the start of the... This, this is this, the, this is the post this the post Crosby Ovechkin yeah. wave is beginning with this it's the Matthews McDavid Eichel yeah. Patterson it, generation the, at this the point. 2014 class I, you know Aaron Eckblad's good and I think there's a couple others in there but um, David Pasternak in the I don't remember if he was in there or not but regardless but that the, the 15 class coming in and now as these guys are sort of filtering throughout the league and all these young studs are just coming in right now and it's not i don't really know who the good young goaltenders are at this point doesn't really feel like there's a whole it's like goaltenders take longer to develop really. yeah and and not i'm not looking you know past there's was 14 so okay so you know i would include ekblad and pasternak in that but um there's i, I don't know you know other than a hassock i don't know if you ever went to the game to go watch the goaltender take your breath away but these young forwards, man, their moves, their natural ability to score, but they're also playing within the, the team structure that seemed to forever kind of make it difficult to watch hockey because the teams were so disciplined and so involved in their structure and their rotations and not really letting any of that, you know, the pizzazz and the free-flowingness of hockey come out. But now these guys are doing it within it, and it's so beautiful to watch. Uh, I watch Casey Middles that play sometimes, and people get frustrated with him. Just, he's a 19-year-old child, pretty much. Very, very I feel young. like yeah. he's snake but, bit, too. I don't think he's playing oh, yeah. poorly. He no, does, he's not, not playing poorly Doesn't get all. the puck luck at all. But, like, the way he plays a game, he doesn't play like a young 19-year-old no, with, got, with He's talent. got some confidence He plays within the game. system, and he plays the NHL-style hockey. He's down there competing for pucks. He battles every shift, mm -hmm. and I can't wait to see 23 under the but, pyramid. 
But you're, in, in, a, in a man's body, yeah, play, <laughs> yeah. He's, he's gonna be so insane. Yeah. But you're seeing that with with all the young Sabres players now. Eichel demonstrated that he was playing above his age. Um, um, Darlene is playing above his age. Peter, uh, Peter, uh, yeah, Nathan Peterman play. playing below his age. Yeah, well, that's more on that I, later. <laughs> <laughs> middle stats playing above his age. I mean, it's uh, it's just crazy that there's this new level of maturity for these young players coming in. People are already going going ahead with Darlene now. He's going to come and be, be a world beater, but he's playing phenomenal. He's playing very well. It's, it's hard for Demon to put a point to Garrett Carlson and as a rookie. Yeah. <laughs> There's a learning curve. We for, we, we've we gotten used to the NFL speed, which is Saquon Barkley is the bar that you set for everyone. You're supposed to come in day one and be immediately impactful, but that's not how it typically works for the NHL. It's only a small small minority of players who even make the opening day rosters mm-hmm. in the NHL coming in at 18, 19 years old. So it's okay if Rasmus Dahlin isn't a 70-point defenseman here in November of his first season. It's going to take time. He's shown some great flashes, but he's by no means completely polished and completely up to the speed of the NHL, and, and that's okay. You he see, doesn't have to be. You see his confidence building every game. He does. He tries more and more. He has some slick moves. It's funny. He makes great passes. And the ones that seem to struggle with the most are D to D, like an offensive zone. He mm-hmm. always misses those passes. But um, there's one guy, like a big hockey guy on Twitter. I don't know. I forget, I forget who it was, but he's like that. Just the over, one, yeah. The overtime goal, we flung up the ice to um, Rista Linen. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, gosh, the, the recognition of Darlene to notice, you know, notice that. It just totally blew up a portion. Like, it's, it's one of the first you learn in hockey. I was so frustrated with it. Like, this guy's a turd. <laughs> Like, Hockey Twitter is a weird place sometimes. Yeah. But for Buffalo, ultimately, take uh, two games since last Monday when we would have recorded if Justin wasn't dying of the plague. And four points in two games. Feels uh, good. Careful. I think Nick and I did a wonderful we job. We recorded a up. podcast, a video podcast. That's true. You can find it on the 716 Sports Podcast Facebook yes. in video form with these two fine gentlemen. Uh, yeah, there were uh, 400 views. We're up to 400 right now. Yeah, so, we did. That's good. And yeah, we had a little fun there. That was a good time. Driving around the neighborhood. Figured we'd just do something. We thought we were just going to do like 30 minutes, and then it turned into almost an hour and a half. But. That sounds like a typical <laughs> podcast for us. Yeah, quick 40 minutes tonight, guys. An hour and a yeah. half later. We should probably In stop talking about cereal. Make it um, tight. <laughs> yeah, we definitely ran into some uh, some squirrels there. So Yeah, well... I had to play rock band guitar. So you did. <laughs> Sue me. <laughs> well, uh, anybody else got anything to say about the Savers in general? Because we got other things. Yeah, like, oh, I think it's just at this point it's going to be interesting to see what comes of this next week. And I think when we record next week, we'll know a little bit more about what this team can oh, be. Oh, absolutely. This year. I, the, I I don't want to say it. it's not make or break because I don't even think the playoffs are a make or break at this point, but I definitely think you have a better understanding of where this team stands within the context of the entire league after uh, Monday night next, next and, week. And so. even an unsuccessful uh, four game stretch here isn't, they're still going to be near the playoff picture. Even if we don't no. expect them to make it, they'll still be competitive. It's just for four that. of 82 and right. they'll be fine. Regardless, but it would and it's only going be to be a, a quarter of the way through oh, the sure. season. Yep, absolutely a bonus. Yep. So uh, there's a lot to go. So now let's talk about the bills. Do you want to talk about the game, or do we want to talk about the transaction? <laughs> let's let's go transaction for. Well, I guess we to, to to talk about why they're doing the transaction. I guess we have to start with the game. I think that that's important. Bills forty one, Jets ten. What <laughs> happened? Football's a there. weird sport. It the is. Bills blow out the Jets. The Titans blow out the Patriots. It's a weird Sunday all around. The Bills well, beat the Titans, and the Patriots beat the Bills. So I think the those circle, the teams circle of suck is back. We'll split the Super Bowl national championship. <laughs> well, Belichick seems to struggle with his uh, old players his and old uh, coaches. Oh, two yeah. this year against teams that I don't think are very good. It's not like the Detroit Titans and is, Lions are uh, bad, but very bad. Uh, regardless of that. So <laughs> you guys remember week one when Sam Darnold carved up the Lions and everyone was calling him the second coming of Joe Namath. And then they proceeded to get just kicked in the dick for eight consecutive weeks. To be fair, Joe Namath sucked. Too. He wasn't good. Joe Namath yeah. had a he less was than one to one touchdown interception ratio. I yeah. believe he was in the negative. But yes. Um, yeah. And that's their best quarterback ever in New York. right? Yes. Now. I mean, Chad Pennington had some great years. But Chad, wrong, but Chad Pennington, Pennington didn't tear his rotator cuff like three or four times. He just had something to say multiple 
simultaneous tears of the same rotator cuff. Um, I just, I don't really know what to say because it was so unexpected. Look, this was a winnable game, and the Bills, prior to this past weekend, played the toughest schedule in the NFL. Guess who has this remainder of the season the easiest schedule in the NFL? The Bills, because they got the Dolphins twice, and they got the Jets twice, and they got a bad Jaguars team, and they got a Browns team. By strength of schedule, the Bills have the easiest schedule remaining. Right. Or not the Browns, sorry. Uh, there's The Lions. One. The Lions, thank you. Um, you know, they, they played tough teams they played the three best teams in their crossover divisions um and other took, than, and took one of them other than the colts i would say are somewhat playoff contenders maybe the packers won't make it but the vikings and the bears and the texans and the titans are all in the in the thick of it you already had to play the patriots and you had you know the they, baltimore they played game the patriots close too. they to did the baltimore game is leaves something to be desired and then they they played the chargers who is their crossover and the chargers are very good I think all but guaranteed at this point the fifth playoff seed. Very difficult opening schedule. What made it so incredible was they brought in for the second consecutive, uh, or well, the second time in a month, three weeks, yeah, um, a quarterback that was available to all thirty-two teams because he was a street free agent. Um, this time it was Matt Barkley, who had not thrown a football in an NFL game in over two years, and the last time he did, he went like. 10 of 14 for 100 yards and two picks or something. Wasn't, it wasn't very a, good. This wasn't did, a gunslinger. This did not appear to be the answer. And out of nowhere, uh, the Bills just light them up. Just light them up. They were throwing downfield. They were creating holes. Shady looked motivated for the first time maybe all season. Everybody was getting it. Marcus Murphy was getting in on it. Everybody was getting in on the action. Um we're signing street free agent wide receivers that are having career games. It's yeah, just a guy that we cut and then re-signed to our practice squad and then recalled from the practice squad and was our first hundred yard receiver since Stevie Johnson. Just, I mean, False. the jet, the jets looked like Rutgers out there. Deontay, looked like they just called it was up Deontay Rutgers. Thompson. Oh, Deontay Thompson, that's right. No, ah. they were, the jets looked like they wanted to be anywhere, but in the Meadowlands that day. And I just, they, that team has completely quit. On I Bulls. don't really, well, yeah, Todd Bowles. I, how he isn't fi- I, I know they have a bye week. That's why he's not fired yet. That's because right. they don't have to rush it. Right. Just take your time. But <laughs> there is no reason to think that Todd Bowles should be employed as a head coach for the, at least of the Jets after that game. I, I just I don't know, man. Do you guys I, see the uh, the video of Damian Woody? No. He like no. walk. He, so he was at the game. Yeah. He walked out at halftime and did a periscope video. Yeah. And it was, he, was, he it, was like, it was like the first 10 seconds he just stared into his camera. <laughs> and then he was like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> like, you're getting beat by the goddamn Buffalo Bills. Yeah, well, and, that doesn't get it, you fired up. Well. <laughs> and that's the thing, right? Is like the Bills three wins and, have come completely out of nowhere. This It's season. a bizarre season. And, it, and it's not like this that the. the it was just a win. Wasn't it for a quarter and a half? The Jets had one total yard of offense or eight total it was yards at least of through offense the first or something. Quarter. I, through the first quarter, I believe it was like one ninety four to one in the total yards. I and I know this that was Darnold in spectacular was spectacular fashion. It was the third most first half yards in Bills history. And like, okay, these aren't exactly like great names. I will say the Jets were no. missing arguably their top. Quarterback, but you running back, an and NFL wide receiver. receiver. But I you would expect also... an NFL team to put up more than one yard of offense in a quarter. Boy, it killed the uh, start your defense against the Bills. Oh my fantasy God. meme, didn't it? <laughs> Actually, thanks for reminding me. I had to check a fantasy league. Yeah, um, every the Jets were like the second most popular defense put in, and they yep. were a minus seven in standard <laughs> scoring for the Bills in uh, in ESPN standard scoring. The only thing that was worse than having uh, the line the the kicker who had four uprights in a league of the laws, negative <laughs> points. The guy played a negative five for Cody Parkey. The upright four times. I don't think people could do that on purpose. Congratulations to Parkey on his future Browns contract. I think that'll be pretty <laughs> I mean, cool the Bucks are him. looking for a kicker today. They cut yeah. Kitten Zero. So. Hey, there's this guy named Roberto Aguayo <laughs> that I want you to High meet. draft pick. Um, Martin Gramatica. <laughs> so, I, would lo- I would love Martin Gramatica to come back. And then the defense also just, you know, it was just three and out. Three and out, yeah. three and out. They never let anything get sustained until the game was well out of reach already. 
But you think about these, like the Vikings game and the Jets game, like why does it all happen in two halves? The first half against the Vikings and the first half against the Jets, both on the road as well, they've put together more than half of their season total in points. This week is because Poncha Power. That's what I've heard. Poncha yeah, Power. And it would have been nice. I know we were talking about off the air. Just imagine if when Zay Jones gets that touchdown and he goes to the camera to show his poncho towel. Imagine if we, the viewing public, got to see that and yeah. enjoy that. Does CBS throw out non-functional cameras just as decoys? <laughs> They're worried that someone's going to hijack an Ocho Cinco style? Yeah. I mean, that's pretty poor production. Or was that like just like a local you know, like whatever, like the ABC affiliate in New York City, and they're like, well, we're never going to show this. This is dis- I don't know what this, this means. Is mean, yeah. Poncho, not in my country. It's not even raining. <laughs> um, the, yeah, that was, that was weird. Like, and they never acknowledged that he went over there or anything. It was just the replay is nothing. Zay Jones back turned to the camera. Holding up a cloth. <laughs> we can't, we have no <laughs> we idea what to see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a powerful moment. Joe Buck would have called it a disgusting act. A disgusting act. display. God, I love that. Joe Buck, your moral <laughs> compass through an immoral sports world. Um, now, God, that clip's like 16 years old, too. Yeah. You were in like elementary school when that happened. The Randy Moss one? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Killer. Um, it is a... Uh, so, it, it's a great day. Um, Matt Barkley provides us with the best performance from a wide receiver... Or from a quarterback that we've seen... In a long time, um, Zay Jones looks like yeah. Zay Jones has by far his best game. I was about to say a question for the, the the five of us here. Does this game, I mean, you don't want to take away too much from it because it's one game in a bad season played by Matt Barkley, but does it change your opinion maybe about the fact that Zay Jones might be an asset for the future? I've always thought you're rushing, you're rushing your judgment on the guy. Receivers always take a little longer, especially, especially not in the first year. They're never good in the first year. But who's he got throwing the ball? See, that's the thing. The better, well, quote-unquote, better quality passers the Bills have brought in, the better he's been performing. Yeah. He's actually been holding on to things lately. And we'll, and I hope that that carries over to when Allen's back, and I think they're really targeting having Allen back for the Week 12 game following the bye week. Allen's got to throw it at him first. Well, that's that's half the battle, and I think that, I mean, you look at... Zane well, that's Jones, why the they're who, throwing Deion Dawkins out there now, because he's yeah. such a big target that <laughs> it's really hard. And then yeah. Logan Thomas is such a big guy as well. It's just all about the big guys. Can we just, uh, in, on top of everything they did well yesterday, and there were, is a lot to like, I just want that coaching mindset and that play calling, I want that every week yeah, like right. where like what fake, about that uh, going for on the fourth down faking the punt throwing the pass to Dawkins like where was this mindset when we were like running draw plays on third and 20 other right. weeks why no. were we not attacking they had, the, they had the fake punt available to them Monday Night Football against the Patriots when the game was still close yeah and that's just not even way. thought about it they, not for a second they, but they, were, they ran well okay for the first drive so that was that was their trickery but, just like I love the aggressiveness of it just, no, I agree they, the, that they, they, game's different if that fake punt doesn't go and, mm-hmm. they, and they don't take that two-score lead. Do the Jets just get the chance to go right back on and try to answer? It's a much different game at that point. What was also nice to see is that they, they signed Isaiah McKenzie, mm-hmm. and then they used him effectively. Yeah, They didn't just sign him and throw him out there to do some dumb shit. They used him the way he should be used, and they actually just used him. You know, and they, uh, He had a pretty first downs, right? Yeah. Or at least two. He's fast. Yeah. I think it was just... Super fast. Yeah. No, that... That guy had quite a reputation. His, his knock has always been his size, but if you can get him into space and try to scheme a guy like that into space is a challenge. But I think Dable did pretty well with only having him here for about a week and getting him the ball mm-hmm. and using him effectively. And he'll be a weapon, you hope, on kick returns too, which is a good – if you can get something out of him there, get your team better position, don't have them consistently starting at their own 25, that's another positive for the offense that's trying to keep building off of this. There is some humor, of course, in this victory. And I'm looking at you, Calvin Benjamin. Over how, how three he, targets. How does he well, not catch that pass? He's the not the only over on three targets, but yeah. He went, also Terrell Pryor, your boy, my boy. How's your jersey? I haven't purchased it yet, but I'm going to. You may want to hold off. No, I no? want it. Mm-hmm. I want it's it. It's gonna go right next to that Percy Harvin <laughs> jersey. Yes. <laughs> Doing it for Percy. Um, it was nice. To, I, I'm sorry, I would interrupt you. No, go ahead. This one, uh, Barkley and the receivers playing well. It was nice just to see. That was probably the, the most effective quarterback play we've seen as a quarterback in a long time. Uh, not even close, yeah. Like, absolutely. just giving I the agree. guys a chance to make a play in the ball. Yep. You, like, guys weren't open. But Buck no. is throwing it. Make a play. For whatever reason, I want to say it was two. 
2016, week three. Uh, the Bills smoked the Dolphins in Miami. It's like f- a similar score to this. It mm-hmm. may not. I, I don't remember specifically. And I felt like that was the last game that I could even come up with where I felt like the quarterback was in complete control. Now, mind you, 15 of 25 for 232 is like a subpar And, and, and lucky to not have any interceptions. At least a couple two, of those were yeah, I mean, no, he threw them up there, and they were up for grabs. And the Jets felt like they dropped they dropped several few, interceptions yeah. yesterday. Um, you know, so a subpar Pat Mahomes or Jared Goff game is what we're hailing as uh, seemingly a you know twice in a decade performance. Well, when, when, when you've been starving for a no, year, I a know. piece of toast looks great. I and know. a guy that hasn't started in two years, um, still complete sixty percent of his I mean, passes. Look, it's... if you're looking for your traditional quarterback play, and that's kind of what you were looking for, right? Yeah, that performance yesterday. Mm-hmm. They threw it twenty five times. They, I, I, six of those in the second half. I, I mean, there was no reason really to forty six forty six rushes. I mean, yeah, <laughs> McCoy was all over I mean, it, and Murphy, Murphy looked, yeah. finally looked like his preseason self. Well, the, the difference is, I, I think not having Ivory, Ivory in there is a, is addition by subtraction for the running game because Murphy plays a very similar game to McCoy, so they're just putting Murphy in. In, in, especially in the second half of the game they were ahead in, just the exact same situation they would put McCoy in. He benefits from those kind of chances versus having to come in and be like the change of pace back for a guy who plays the exact yeah. same style of football that he does. But McCoy, I mean, 26 rushes, 113 yards, uh, two touchdowns, um, w- one catch for five yards, whatever. The, the fact that he was able to find some space, and why was that space there? Because they threw it for 200-plus yards. The, yep. the the defense had to respect the pass game, and they had to respect the pass game on all levels. All I heard today was about how that's the best the old line has looked all season, and no. it did. But no, part it, of that was mm-hmm. because there weren't eight guys in the box right. every play. They weren't being run blitzed every right. play. And I, I think the old line still has major issues, and I don't think that one game should correct it. Maybe no, they no. did block a little bit better, but to me the bigger deal is when you can actually establish – the pass game, then that's what opens up the run, and that's what the modern NFL is about. Yeah, why Taylor killed it though? Yeah, uh, I heard, th- I saw all twenty-two breakdowns of Mr. Teller. It's very exciting. It's Throwing out pancake blocks last week, Bill and I were not Orlando pay stuff. I don't even know. We, were, <laughs> we said something about Wyatt, Wyatt Teller. Just it was a throwaway. Cause it's like, well, fuck it. Like, yeah, I know what else this is going to work out. From uh, what Virginia Tech, right? You, yeah. Look, people. I've never heard of a yeah, like a essentially a redshirted offensive lineman getting more love than Wyatt Teller had. And hey. but hey, he came out and uh, yeah, just handing out pancakes left and right. Um, the offensive line is still a big deal. It is being able to respect all levels of the passing game because if you can go short, medium, and long with any semblance of consistency and respect then that is why you can run for four and a half yards every time. Mm-hmm. And then you're staying ahead of schedule when you're running on any down. You can run on any down, too. It can be second and eight, and you can still run for six. And because the play calling was so much more varied and less predictable, the defense couldn't just camp on McCoy on first down because then they would get McKenzie on the end around. First play of the game, I mean, they did it. They had everything lined up to on the first play of the game. Hey, we're going to run this ball. They had the extra big man in. And I think from that moment on, the Jets were scrambling. The yep. second that that pass fell into Foster's hand, they didn't know what to do. Yep. Yeah, who expects the Bills to actually go downfield? And not just go downfield, go downfield successfully. We've seen Allen go downfield. The ball's just 15 yards away from everyone. At this point, I mean, the Barkley deep ball to Foster is the best downfield throw this season. Yep. So, Barkley to Foster, as we all thought it was, <laughs> going to be at the beginning of the season, finally. Imagine what kind of odds you could have gotten in Vegas if you wagered on Matt Barkley throwing a pass to Terrell Pryor for the Bills this season. Wait, and I, when he completes it, it's going to be even better odds. <laughs> um, someday. Someday, God will. Well, is he, so, is he going to go do it in two weeks? We'll find out. Depends on whether or not Josh, is at, Josh Allen's healthy. I think they've made it pretty clear Segway. with no offense and butts about it that <laughs> Josh Allen's their guy. 41-10, and 10, everybody's happy. It's a great Buffalo weekend. Sports winning, yay. Almost everybody's happy. And now we go to Monday, and we go to around 8 p.m. Actually, I believe it was exactly 8 p.m., according to our friend of the pod, Adam Schefter. He's not our friend. We've never met him before. He's a friend of the friend of the pod. He's been on Analytics. Perfect. Let's go with that. Um, and then what do we see? The greatest moment of all time. 
we missed the PAT. No, Nathan Peterman wasn't sure has been let go, released, <laughs> cut, future destroyed, endeavor. future endeavor. <laughs> we wish him well. No, he, he didn't even get that. He got Enzo Amore. He didn't even get the best of luck. Uh, yeah. He just like we it, have released Nathan Peterman. It took Matt Barkley providing us with the best passing game in like a year or so um, to finally let the team know that they can let their sweet baby boy, Nate <laughs> Peterman. How much tape do you think McDermott watched today before officially announcing this? Four hours before he was released, he's like, hey, this got to find guy something watch as a player. Got to now, see what he did on the bench yesterday. <laughs> so now what we see is all of these local and national types alike saying, boy, I wish this guy well. Um, I hope he gets another opportunity. So, all right. Anybody that's saying, I hope that Nathan Peterman gets another opportunity. I want to know what their favorite football, which is their favorite football team, and invite them to sign Nathan Peterman and allow him to play one half of football for them and then tell me if they feel the same way. You looked at him on the sidelines yesterday in the second half, and he like he knew. He, 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 knew, he, he knew. knew the second Barkley went for 200 plus. He's like, that's, uh, he wore, that's not good. He wore his helmet the whole game. His helmet and that big coat the last the entire time I'm wearing game. this. <laughs> So, I already probably, wrote this book for you. He probably, guys. probably left it. He probably left with it. Oh yeah. <laughs> he wore. He walked out with his helmet on. I will give you back the playbook, but I'll be damned if you let. Me, sorry, I'll be darned if you let me take away this. <laughs> this is a Christian me. podcast. Yeah, I swear here. So, I've so already, I already wrote this book. This is going to happen. Yeah. Peter's going to go to the XFL. Yeah. He's going to win his first championship in the XFL. Just like JP Lossman with the Las Vegas locomotives. And then he's going to be picked up Tommy by Maddox. Tommy Maddox. Yep. He's going to picked up by the Patriots. And Tom Brady's going to get a back injury in the playoffs, and Peter will be the quarterback for the next 15 years. That's what's going to happen, guys. I, I, I will subscribe to that story. <laughs> what a that, shitty book. It's either that or like the, that, what, AAFL? Does that have the Fabio U- the on the UFL? front of it? No, yeah. AAFL. The AAFL. Oh, yeah, 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 that, yeah, yeah. Um, that, it's like the other Southern one. football. Christian yeah. Hackenberg just signed a contract, too. <laughs> Steve Spurrier Where? is like a GM Ooh. in that. Oh, it's like it's Birmingham and like yeah. uh, Tam- Tampa. Or no, Orlando or something like that. They don't There's have a Florida good. franchise. I know we have a couple of college football guys also on this podcast. This court, this quarterback class this year feels like the exact same class that we're going to hop some guy up like Mackenzie Milton and make him the, the next Christian Hackenberg first round top ten pick, and he's going to be in that league in two years. Yeah, oh, for sure. It'll be There's exciting. no one in this draft or whatever. Like, well, unless Dwayne Haskins decides he wants to come out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that right now. Um, <laughs> Because I had to watch, I still had to watch one mandatory hideous football game, and that was Ohio State versus. It was Michigan very bad. State. That was, was not very good. Bad. Very bad. The punter. The, was the, the best MVP. part about that game was Michigan State snapping the ball off the guy going for the end around. Yeah. That was just a great exercise. There were utility. so many more highlights of that. So anyway, <laughs> getting back to the point that Nathan Peterman's dead in Buffalo. Um, Nathan Peterman's dead in Buffalo. But I, he's, he, no, he's alive. Well, he's everybody. alive. Yeah, he's he's not, we're not breaking news. He's figuratively dead. We're just uh, he's literally running him out on rails. His career. Will he get signed to the practice squad? No. 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 Because somebody's going to sign him or just they're just going to Yeah, because we have three quarterbacks good. on the roster. Yeah, the, 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 we, I mean, we can sign Anderson's him to the practice squad. Has he accrued too much time in the NFL to be signed no. to the practice squad? No. Okay. No, he's like still so. eligible. He's still second year. I'm still thinking that he's going to be on the practice squad. There's no way. And they just cleared out his five. Why not? There's three Who's going to pick him up? There's three quarterbacks on the team. That doesn't mean anything. I mean, they actually that have a spot because they called up Foster this week. It means nothing. Derek Anderson doesn't mean anything at this point. He's still on the team. I they didn't cut him. He's on the team. They didn't cut him. I know that they didn't cut him, but I still think that they would. I, uh, I, I think, didn't think about that. I think they would keep Peterman on the practice roster just in case because it's not like any of these guys have any long track showing that they can stay healthy. Now I understand the Allen thing's a little bit flukier, but gonna it's going like to give Bills fans guy. the biggest like disappointment ever if they see him back on the roster. When, what a season. redemption story! <laughs> when was the last time Matt Barkley was injured for the Bills? For the oh, okay, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, there we go. Can't argue. Solid point. <laughs> Suck it. Yes, check, right. check the well, math on it, that. It, it only took Anderson you. what two games to get injured, so yeah, we've still got uh, two weeks. Skip Bayless over there. You got me, Skip. Boom. Good for you, Mike. Drop Cowboys. Um, Nathan Peterman is a good human being. Nathan Peterman was a shitty quarterback. I can separate the two and say that you can be a great human being, and if you're bad at your job, you don't deserve to be employed. And I think it's simple as that. And well, I also find it hilarious how many people would defend this guy. He's as bad as he is unlucky, though. I mean, it's like 50-50. Uh, well, uh, the Nathan Peterman apologist has logged on. So, <laughs> look, 
I think Barkley's game is about but all the proof got, that you need. That but you've got three quarterbacks on the roster that you do. You would all you would one hundred percent of the time put ahead of Peterman. Yes, I mean you've probably Except got for the you've of probably got a fourth quarterback if you want to put Logan <laughs> Thomas ahead of him too. Or Terrell Pryor, Pryor. Pryor's a better quarterback. So, than I mean, quarterbacks. at this point, there's five different five quarterbacks you can put. Ahead of I'm the waiting guy. for the, waiting for the three quarterback formation with Thomas and Pryor in the backfield surrounding Matt Barkley, oh, as God. we all predicted. Get the galaxy brain meme out. <laughs> I mean, technically, there have been five starting quarterbacks for this Buffalo Bills team this year because Sean McCoy. Sean McCoy did, took the first snap. Took the first snap, so he's technically a starting quarterback. He did the so Matt Castle put McC- Memorial let's put McCoy snap. McCoy ahead of Peterman too. <laughs> and just like Matt Castle. LeSean McCoy, a losing record as a member of the Buffalo Bills starting quarterback. It happens. It is really something that Nathan Peterman was still a thing. Um, See, I just wanted him just because it was bad. Well, I admit it. I just because it was bad. Oh, there was some shot in Freud of the potential with well, that and wanting them to tank for a top five pick. Right. But um, that's because yeah. that's a result of being terrible. And it's not like I'm thrilled that this is. Ha- I just. Like, the wins at this point are whatever. Oakland is the worst team in the league. I don't think they're going to be caught unless right. the I, well, Giants. I guess the Giants and the Raiders are, are tied. We haven't looked at the score of the Monday night game yet, which oh, is currently Yeah, because San Francisco is down Everybody there loves the 49ers thir- thir- in prime 13 time. 13 to 10 Giants. There you go. Red, there you go. Uh, Niners in the red zone. So, whatever. If get they, you some Nick Mullins. <laughs> get your Mullins on. If they pick fifth, if they pick ninth, I don't really give a shit at this well, point. At the Bills, you're looking at it. you got Oakland. You've got... The Oakland's terrible. The Giants are terrible. The, the Niners are bad. Raiders, Giants, you just Cardinals. The Jets. Cardinals, 49ers, and... Uh, Tampa. And, and Tampa. And, and the Jets. Those are your competitors yep. at this point. And Cleveland, although Cleveland just somehow beat Atlanta in a four-quarter football game. Weird sport. Baker Mayfield. I don't think Cleveland's that bad. Well, don't Cleveland forget Cleveland lucky. did tie Pittsburgh. Well, they're, th- they're three six year. and one. I mean, they're they're not as bad as that record, right. but their record is not great. Still, their record is not good. That is a valid point. Nothing but facts here, and that's what you're providing with us, Jeff. <laughs> First time for that. and that and that's how draft picks are decided. It's not how good you look on the field. How the best the team that's ranked better in statistical categories doesn't get the. Lower draft pick, it's purely by record and tiebreakers. I mean, the Bills have three teams left on their schedule that they might draft after. You right. know, the Jets, the Lions, and the, the wheels have fallen off the bus in Jacksonville. Jacksonville looks bad, man. Real bad. Um, Nathan Peterman, does he take another snap for any NFL team? Ever? Ever. No. Who plays first, Peterman or Kaepernick? Neither. 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 I think both are done, and both if will hopefully see, sue the NFL. If you see either of them back in the league, you'll see Peterman <laughs> before Kaepernick. Wouldn't it be funny if Peterman true. got a Nike contract? <laughs> For what? Just believe in something, even if he's <laughs> throwing everything for an interception. Just do it, even <laughs> when the coach says you probably shouldn't be out there anymore. It's 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 like one of those old school, like, they told me I couldn't be an NFL quarterback ads, except for the end, it's like, they were right. Flashes to Nathan Peterman. Yeah. So... This boy tried for 24 years to become a professional quarterback. Nathan Peterman is And he was for a few minutes. Yes. Nathan Peterman will get that good locker room, like smart quarterback presence, and he'll be on an NFL roster in the next three to four months. Congratulations to all future Make-A-Wish children that decide that they want to play in the NFL because you're probably going to be better than Nathan Peterman (laughs) on the field. Well, lucky for me, he's got an NBA to fall back on. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, he's got that business savvy, huh? Uh, the 49ers are just taken. But he's got a long resume of poor decisions. So Nick we'll Mullins to Matt Breda. Yeah. Like, Fan- fantasy legends. Just like the Peterman firm. Trust us with your money. Like, uh, uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Peterman, Cobb, and Castle. Well, it can't end, in law. It can't end up worse than his uh, interception percentage. I, if he had his interception, that would be a great ROI. Amazing. If he could hit that 10% ROI on this <laughs> inter- like his interception. Be a billionaire. Oh, my God. I'd love that. And never forget. Yeah, but he'll take a fluky bounce and yeah. weird things happening. But in his last start, his lasting legacy to me is that Nathan Peterman led the Bills in rushing against the Bears. <laughs> my last, my lasting legacy is turning on GR on the Monday after the Bears game and hearing the call of John Murphy's hollowed out touchdown Buffalo for Peterman breaking the touchdown, no <laughs> touchdowns in nine quarter streak. But that, um, that's that memory I'll hold on to forever. Yep, yeah. Justin, I'm gonna. Uh, send you a photo, and I want this to be the banner on our Twitter feed, uh, 716 Sport Podcast. I want this to be the photo that we have for tonight's show. 
Um, I'm gonna send that over to you right now. This is an audio medium, so for those of you who can't see, Bill, oh he's man, check out texting. Well, that Justin. was me. Yeah, it was me. I'm plugging the plugging the Twitter feed, my man. The Twitter, 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 Twitter. 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 Kids love Twitter. Um. So and yeah, trains. what do we do now on the bye week? Well, uh, Bill, you and I on oh, this bye yeah. weekend. Are going to be doing something. I don't. I don't, I don't think, want to say it. Yeah, we don't want to. Don't want we're going to do something that. very fun. We're, I think we're going to have fun with something, and I think everybody's going to. And not only that, potentially, I, I want to tease it a little bit. Go on. It's something that no other Buffalo sports podcast has ever done before. I think that's a valid statement. That's and probably, probably true. will ever do. <laughs> also likely. <laughs> Because they're smarter than us. Well, <laughs> we, we have we are uh, the benefactors of opportunity. <laughs> when the opportunity presents itself, you got to go and grab it. Yeah, so uh, stay tuned to our Facebook page. We'll probably do a live video this weekend at some point. Check, yeah, check at some point. I think it'll be a lot of fun. So we'll leave it at that. Um, we'll have it up at some point. Um, anything else going on? You be basketball. You be football. You be football. Jeez. You be sports in general. What a week for the university. Yeah, they're uh they're pretty good. Not You be basketball top twenty five as of today yeah. after beating West Virginia. Number at West Virginia. 25. Best win in the country. Yep. Yeah. By far. And well You be football maybe, also. Maybe goes. Duke beating Kentucky by thirty, but that's just me Zion, being well, that's Zion me being, Williams. I apologize. But Duke beating Army yesterday. <laughs> Zion Williamson doesn't respect the troops. My take, my yeah. column. No, yeah, write it out. Um, yeah, look, it, it it's pretty incredible. They have um, an opportunity tomorrow, um, I believe, to clinch the MAC East, which would guarantee them a spot in Detroit. Um, Ohio, a, a fairly decent opponent. I believe that they would be most likely playing Northern Illinois um, in Detroit for the uh, MAC championship. Hey, they've. The lights got a little bright there one time. Other than that, um, this has been a, a really fun story to watch on the football field. Um, and then the basketball team, by getting a huge marquee victory so early, um, they're going to have the opportunity to play from a position of strength and by doing so, without knowing exactly what their schedule is looking like, um, they have Syracuse, but the MAC is not a very strong conference. Right, the MAC year. has been a one bid league for two decades now. UB, so, UB is football is playing on Wednesday. Oh, sorry, when? Okay, so Wednesday, I believe it's an ESPN two game. So Wednesday, ESPN two, yes, it's a Maction game, Maction exclusively on the weekdays. Now, so we hit November. Um, yeah, I mean, there is a lot of. Uh, there's a lot to like right now with the athletic department when, and I can't remember it. Uh, was it Danny white left um, to Florida, go to central UCF. Florida? Yeah, yeah. It, it felt like, you know, and he, he had some hits and misses, but I think overall he left the athletic department in a better position than when he got there. Um, the whole state university of New York at Buffalo fiasco uh, <laughs> left undone, but um, you know, they have a multi million dollar facility that's going to be built around the one. Uh, you know, you can see it going up behind the one end zone. Um, there seems to be some sort of fan interest that, that has not existed before. All these are good things to have. Um, the Buffalo market, it's okay to, you know, I will never root for you being basketball. That's a philosophical thing, but. If they can do okay in football, I think it only helps the it's area. It's because you're a dirty Franciscan. That's right. Well, look. These <laughs> dirty, dirty, dirty Franciscans. Guess who these dirty Franciscans consistently beat UB every single year yeah. in basketball. Well, let's check, see what happens this year. Check the tape. Canisius doesn't, so I'm just going to jump right on the UB <laughs> bandwagon right away. <laughs> Go Griffs, though, by the way. Yeah. I, um, I, don't, I don't hold out those hopes. That's fine. It's fine. Um, I last I checked, Bonaventure is down to Niagara tonight, so I don't want. Yeah, not good. Not good. Not fam. good. Not good, not good, not good at Oof. all. Um, but yeah, good for um, good for UB athletics. Uh, UB in football, we're what we are. Well, I'm a master student, so I will sure. say um, UB uh, football is I believe 29th in the coaches poll. Yeah, they're receiving votes, but I don't remember if they're like 29th or 30th, I somewhere in that range. Yeah, they're right behind Army by like five points, and then on the uh, USA Today poll. That's the coach's poll. 
Yes. AP poll? AP poll. I think they're a little bit farther back. I think they're about 31 or 32. I mean, the big ranking. Rank point, Buffalo. The big you thing, cowards. Yeah. The big thing cowards. at this point is the this is the selection show every Tuesday. If they can get into that, because that's really the only one that matters. They've now, made but. the ESPN uh, uh, commercial for the... Uh, College football player. Oh, they're the one of the. They're one of the, the ticked spins, off there. Yeah. Along with, I think I saw a, a clip. It was uh, with Utah mm-hmm. and uh, Utah State. I think Utah. Hell State's yeah. Po- yeah, Utah yeah, State's four teams in the country right now. Yeah, get that UCF and maybe Utah State, Boise Fre- State, Fresno State, yeah, Boise State and just beat Fresno, so Fresno's done. Hey, oh, they but out. I mean, UB's 29th or 30th in the AP poll, and there's two four loss power conference teams at 24 and 25. Right. I exactly. hate it. There's no way that a Northwestern six and four team should be ranked ahead of UB. Um, Big Ten West yeah. champion <laughs> Ye- Northwestern Wildcats. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. And since I will never have the opportunity to do this again, congratulations to the UAB Blazers. They have won the conference their conference USA division. Uh, that team was literally killed yeah, by killed Bear off, Bryant's yeah. son and a whole bunch of bullshit politics in Alabama. And they actually got enough support to bring the team back, and they are building a stadium on campus. And two years after coming back, they are nine and one. I think that's pretty. That's awesome. Well done. So, bully on them. Um, Justin, how's the internet? We're gonna go to the Justin on the internet. He's got a J Crew ad up right now. No, no, that's a uh, <laughs> that's a picture of a woman a with Jason Pominville, Jeff Skinner, and Jack Eichel on oh, a J like Crew it. ad. Oh. Who's in the background? Uh, is, that in the back? is that Sam Reinhardt? <laughs> <laughs> I never noticed the guy in the back. <laughs> Bringing you your meme update by text. Oh, everyone. man. I think memes are so much better when you describe them audi- audibly. <laughs> and then people are just like, oh, man, that sounds pretty good. I wish I was there. <laughs> just a quick click that retweet. We can see it on the Twitter feed. <laughs> click that retweet. Uh, okay. At 716 Sports podcast smash that that retweet. Retweet. smash that podcast. retweet button Sma- fam. smash that like button please like share and Be- subscribe while Ring it's that still bell. available because the like button is going away we want to have real dialogue and real conversation well that just means i'm going to interrupt people less because i don't want to actually tweet at anyone i just want to click a little button it makes my life easier and i have a lot of things to say about um stan lee i'm sorry that he passed away i know comic books mean a lot to people it's a sad day so Safe home to Stan Lee. I was going to make a Captain America joke, but then it turns out that he did Captain America as well. Um, so it wasn't applicable anymore. So fair. Not very quick with that, but um, that should just about do it, I believe. What else is there? There's really not much else. How are the Buttes doing right now? They're they had a couple weeks off for the Four Nations Cup. Yep. Oh, that's right. So they're back this weekend on the road. They don't have a home game again until the ninth of December. Okay. Or the eighth, whatever that Saturday is, um, but they'll be getting back into it this week. A couple of players got a chance to compete in the Four Nations Cup. Um, Cameron Easy looked really good. Zabadas and Hensley got to play, but it'll be interesting to see what comes back. That's always a it's a weird to get you have like two weekends of games and then you stop right away and take two weeks for international play, and so they'll have a couple weeks before they're back home again. But not a lot going on for them at this point. Uh, Bandits will be starting. Up maybe <laughs> we don't know yet. <laughs> Hey, Steve, where are you? Um, as of the la- as of two days ago, nothing has been done uh, regarding the the contract dispute between the NLL and the NLLPA. The Bandits canceled a camp they were supposed to have a couple weeks ago, a couple weeks coming up. Um, the Teams season are canceling starts this... very soon. The it's season to starts start the first of December. December. Is their first scheduled game? It's a home game, and we are bearing down on that pretty quick. And I'm. Not Pre- sure we're preseason see games it. have been canceled. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, it's not a good situation for a 11 team league that already had one season in the recent past. I believe it was 2008, the 2008 season where the season was threatened, was supposed to go on, then was threatened with a work stoppage, and they settled it just in time. They had, um, I believe it was Chicago and Arizona drop out that year, and neither team has come back. It's just not a good situation in a team where, in a league where not all the teams are f- fully financially stable. So and, it'd be and interesting to follow. It's a league that struggles to get fans in sometimes, not in Buffalo, but in some other cities. You have two teams, one returning, one brand new. 
it will be a tough spot, especially for the team in San Diego. Welcome to the league. Uh, you're immediately in a lockout. Yeah, you're not playing. <laughs> yeah, and um, San Diego is not anywho, exactly it, the it's best. It's not a traditional lacrosse market by any means. They have no close rivals either. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what comes of this. Um, as a bandit season ticket holder and big fan of the sport of professional lacrosse, it is concerning um, to be this close to the season and not know what, what to expect or what's going to happen. Um, I hope that there is nothing or if maybe they miss a game, but the closer we get to it, the more likely it is that something that's going to impact the regular season is going to happen. I hope on your business card it says Jeff Boyd, big fan. Maybe. Just a huge fan. Just a big fan of whatever you, whatever, whatever it is you're doing, and then like your fax number. <laughs> Go very eighties with it. Yeah, just in case here's you my, want to send my fax me a fax send, send me a page. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. I've literally never seen one of those work in my entire life. Never. Man, you're young. So young. It's fine. Little baby boy. Not that much younger than the rest of you. Just young enough. Young enough Younger to not me. know what a fax machine is. <laughs> I don't know what a fax machine Never is. Never seen one in operation. Yeah. Well, by the time that I was getting to be where I was like working or anyone, that's, true. that's like, true. My parents weren't like big business people, so I never had them. I've definitely sent faxes. Sent oh, yeah. Faxes. Absolutely. I've sent faxes. Yeah. Just yeah people still do that. Yes, they do. Because he works at Xerox. <laughs> no. The carbon fiber company. Um. Yeah, I should just about do it. I got one thing. Go ahead. It's not sports related. That's fine. Big ups. We are currently uh, re- uh, recording on uh, November 12th. Sure. Yep. Sure. Yeah. We'll so it's that. a day after the actual uh, Veterans Day. So I want a big shout out to my fellow veterans. Uh, thanks. Like Joe Stoyak. Yeah. Joe probably doesn't listen, but probably not. definitely is not probably. listening to the show <laughs> right now. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Um, if Thanks, you made it Nick. this far. He's got to roll an intro that um, only mentions Joe and Nick this week. Yeah. Yeah. So we got there. Uh, there was a bet. So glad that we um, got but there. I know if there's any veterans who listen. Thanks. Yeah, we appreciate your service. Thanks for doing that. We'll be back next I know week it with a little bit work of work uh, out for you. But. Uh, Bill, what social media do we want to plug this week? Um, We want to plug our YouTube page, which I think is going to be growing in popularity. Uh, each and every day as we are if you ring if you ring that bell right now you'd be the first three minute vlogs just constantly happening Justin's on there a lot live streaming um, just shooting the breeze he's a passionate filmmaker um, he one time actually um, wrote the second version of the script for the film Super 8 because he <laughs> loves film so much um, so if you find our YouTube page be sure to check out um, him reading in every character's voice the Super 8 second draft. Eventually, I think there were 30 or 40 more of those, but you can kind of piece together what the story would have been um, through the eyes of Justin Eurig, who unfortunately passed away tonight and is no longer with us and he can't make it. Um, so, Justin, if you're out there, uh, thanks for everything. Uh, thanks for letting us record at your house. That's pretty cool. Um, your wife seems to be fine with it. Um, I hope your dogs are good. There's a big picture of you on the wall, so we'll always remember what you look That's like. It, to, to be fair, the That's event that skinniest. Justin passed away, we would always have that fat head. We would always have that fat head. I it's would, not that fat. We always have that skinny head. I'll bring it to the services. <laughs> that normal-sized head. Justin, in the event that you die sometime that we're all alive, yeah. can we bring the fat head to your funeral? I'll put it in my will. Oh, please, my please God. Do. Who has said that? <laughs> It's oh, the you're ghost. here. The ghost. <laughs> you were blending in with your black polo into your black uh, spinny chair, I believe, which is the technical term for it. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> we're working on that for a few weeks. Spinny but chair. Camouflage. Um, yeah, so anyway, check out that YouTube page again. Super 8 readings by Justin. Pretty cool. Check them out. Are they sponsored by anybody? Super 8? <laughs> I have a hard time believing that they are. Yeah, we're also brought to you tonight by Motel 6, <laughs> which is the only other thing I can think of that has a number in it. And that'll do it. Good night. As soon as he hits stop, keep it in.